Howdy all and welcome back. As in the previous series, I'm going to assume you already have Node installed. If you don't, there's a bunch of helpful documentation on Node.js.org and installers for both Mac OS X and Microsoft Windows that can be found here, as well as binaries for Linux and Sun OS. As for my development environment, I'm using OS X version 10.10.1, .10 also known as Yosemite. For my text editor, I'm using Sublime Text 2, which can be found here. There's also an update to the editor, version 3, which I'm not currently using, but can be found here. Another tool we'll be using is the quite awesome Chrome extension known as Postman. And last, but certainly not least, I'll be using Sales version 0.11. Now, you may see me running some release candidates of Sales initially. However, because the release of Sales version 0.11 is imminent, I'm not going to bother with how to install a release candidate. And these initial screencasts are really not affected by the currently published version, which is version 0.10.5. OK, let's get Sales up and running by heading over to the terminal window. From the last series, I received comments from a bunch of folks who had a real aversion to the terminal window. For those of you who are new to back-end programming, jumping into the terminal window might seem intimidating. Let me start by saying, if I can understand it, believe me, you can understand it. In fact, by the end of this series, you'll wonder how you got through your day without multiple visits to the terminal. For those of you on OS X, you'll find the terminal application is somewhat hidden in slash application slash utilities. One other potential point of confusion about the terminal is how it's referred to. For example, you'll hear terminal window, prompt, command line, shell, etc. For what it's worth, here is my attempt at terminology superimposed on the thing that I'll be calling the terminal. With that said, let's jump in. To install sales, you simply type npm install sales g, where the dash g stands for global. Note that because of the way ownership rights are set up on my machine, I have to use sudo or super duper user. Actually, according to Wikipedia, it means substitute user do, something like that. Regardless, it allows you to temporarily issue a command as a super or root user. After pressing enter, sales will start installing. So, see you in a second. In the last series of Building Activity Overlord, some people were confused about the distinction between installing sales globally and where sales is installed when creating a new project. By installing sales globally, we can have access to command line tools from anywhere on the command line. For example, let's go ahead and create the initial sales project for Activity Overlord version 2.0. From the terminal, I'll type sales, new, Activity Overlord 2.0. So what just happened? Sales used the globally installed version of itself to generate all of the necessary initial structure for our application. That includes installing a copy of Sales itself inside our application. That way, Sales applications are completely self-contained. There's no other software outside of our project that we're dependent upon. Throughout these screencasts, there will be times that I want to address specific changes that affect the previous activity of our Lord screencast with version 11 of sales. So if you don't have previous experience or interest with older versions of sales, now is the time to pick up that musical instrument or check some text for the next few seconds. When I created the new sales project, you may have noticed that I didn't use the dash dash linker parameter. That's because there's no longer a requirement to use it. By default, that functionality is built into every sales project. Let's go back into the terminal and move into the new project by typing CD Activity Overlord 2.0. Without changing any of the initial files or folders of the app, I can start our newly created web server by typing sales lift. And sales confirms that it is indeed up and running. Next, I'll open a browser at localhost 1337. The browser is actually accessing the default homepage sales generated when we initially built the project. You know, it's important to take a moment here and realize what we've accomplished. In just a few commands, we've built the initial infrastructure of a web application, which includes the creation of its own web server. We then have a browser, known as the client, that is making a request for a previously generated homepage through the sales web server. The sales server then responds with that home page to be rendered in the browser. 
Some of you may be confused by the address localhost 1337. Typically, when you browse the web, you'll enter a domain name like google.com, and that name actually resolves to some IP address which maps to some computer out there on the internet. All right, localhost is the default name for what is technically termed a loopback address. My machine's localhost points to the address 127.0.0.1. What the loopback address allows us to do is bypass the outside network and address a specific web service on our local machine. In our case, that web service is the sales server. So when the sales server starts or lifts, by default, it's given a port number of 1337. As we'll see in a second, we can change the port number if we want. Port numbers are the way in which we can differentiate one web service from another. For example, I currently have our Activity Overlord 2.0 project running on port 1337. I created another sales project called Foo that I'm going to lift on port 1338. When I go into the browser and open the address localhost 1338, the home page that I altered comes up for the Foo project. So the combination of localhost and the port number allows us to run both the server and the client on the same machine while we're building the project. To get completely geeky and show you that localhost is really an arbitrary name, there's a file found on my Mac at etc slash host that specifies what points to 127.0.0.1. As you can see, in addition to localhost, I have the name Yaya also pointing to 127.0.0.1. And yes, we can go into the browser and type Yaya1337 and our homepage comes up. Okay, I think I have beat that one to a pulp, but sometimes, you know, I just get carried away. In the next episode, we'll start building up the client UI of Activity Overlord 2.0. So see y'all in a bit, and thanks for being patient with me.